In this video, I want to share with you how to carve this flag. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Edgar with AE Timber and Pine. A couple months ago, I came back from a law enforcement conference. It's a conference where some SWAT officers were getting more training. And in this particular conference, there was a trade show. And I had the privilege and the honor of being one of those vendors at that trade show. In preparation for that trade show, I made a lot of flags in a really short period of time. And one of those flags was this particular army flag. And about two weeks ago, I did a quick edit of the time lapse, added some music to it, and I posted it to some Facebook groups. And some of the comments that I received were, what were the settings? What bits did I use? And the purpose of this video is to share with you the settings and the process that I went through to complete this flag. Before we jump into it, just real quick, if you guys are getting value out of these videos, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. It really helps out the channel a lot. And while I was there at the conference, I was able to meet a lot of vendors, a lot of cool people. And I happened to meet an officer named George Figueredo, and he is a fellow side hustler as well. He is the owner of Tac Man Industries. I have his shirt right here. It's an awesome fitting shirt. I appreciate it, George. I'll leave a link down below if you're a fellow officer and interested in the product that he is selling. I'm not being sponsored by Tech Man Industries, but what I really liked is that he is not only a full-time police officer protecting his community, he is also a side hustler. So I want to just give a shout out to a fellow side hustler as well. So go ahead and take a look at his website. If you're a police officer, his product may be able to save your life. So let's go ahead and jump into this video now. So jumping into Carbide Create, the very first thing that you're going to want to do is come over here to the job setup gear option and set up the uh, the job specifics, all the specifications of your particular job with height, thickness. In this particular case, it is a 12 by 23 inch flag or material size. So let's go ahead and click OK. The next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to import the file that you're going to want to make. In this case, it's going to be this army skull from Patriot Nation Design. So if you want to go ahead and do this one and follow along, go ahead and click on the link below. It is there for you to purchase. Once I have it sized to what I think is best, I do like to do this one extra step. I like to copy one of these long stripes. In this particular case, it's this bottom one here. I already have it copied. And what I like to do is I like to zoom in here real quick and grab a corner node and then attach it to the bottom left. What I'm doing here is I'm making sure that there is at least the exact same width or space for a stripe here because as you know, these stripes here are going to be pocketed and they're going to be our white stripes. So this top one here, there's an imaginary black stripe here and one down here. And so what I like to do is I like to then bring in the stripe and attach it to the lower left hand side here, uh, node to node here, and then make sure that there is enough room for one stripe there and then also bring it over here to the top to make sure that there's enough space for a stripe. So since I have enough space there, I am good to go. I hope I explained that correctly or clear enough for you to understand. But if not, let me know in the comments and I'll uh, maybe do a specific video on that. One thing I wanna make clear before we get further is that my spacing on this grid is half an inch. Oop, no, nope, not there, here. Grid spacing is half an inch. So just keep that in mind because in the next step, we're going to analyze or just kind of go over our file. As you can see here, we have a lot of detail with these, uh, with all these little vectors here that are very close together. So I just want you to take a look at it. You have this here, these, what would be the buckle for the helmet. These are all very close together. Again, this spacing here, this grid spacing is half an inch. So this is a lot smaller than half an inch here, this space between these vectors. So what does that mean? In my experience, I am not able to carve that detail. I am not able to get these two vectors, for example. Let's just go ahead and pick on these two right here. I am not able to get these vectors to carve cleanly. And what tends to happen to me, I can only speak for myself, is that these will eventually, when they get carved, will be merged or blended and it'll be just one larger uh, carved out spot and it's not gonna look good. Even though it's one larger area carved out, it just doesn't look good. What I like to do then is I like to look for these vectors that are really close together, like this here. So this whole buckle area needs to be cleaned up in my opinion. So let's take another example. These two vectors here are within this larger vector. If I keep these two vectors here, it's not gonna add any more value to the overall image. I like to just personally remove these. Same with this. Same with maybe here. What I typically do is I just like to keep one of these two, for example. I'm just going through this real quick, guys. I just wanna show you what I go through, what my thought process is. Another area here is this eye here, this area for the eye and the nose. 
these are too close together. In my experience, these will end up getting carved together and it's just not going to be a clear picture and it's just gonna look blended, mushed all together. Okay, so with that being said, let me go ahead and show you what it looks like once it's cleaned up, once I take away some of these vectors. So let's go ahead and click on this one here because I probably deleted that one. All right, so as you can see, I went ahead and cleaned up some of these areas of the file. As you can tell, the buckle has been cleaned up. I removed some of those vectors, some of these vectors in here. It's, yep, as you can see, I removed all these vectors in here. Let's see what else I cleaned up. In this larger vector, I removed these two inner ones. I kept all these here, and these, these I kept. I removed some of these here. So this is just what I personally like to do. So if you're following along, go ahead and clean up your file. Go ahead and clean it up however much you'd like, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so the next step is now setting up our toolpaths. And I like to do my toolpaths in groups, as I mentioned before. So in this particular design, I have three different toolpaths. I'm gonna have one for the stars, one for the stripes, and one for the skull and army text here. In this particular case, I'm going to set up my stars to be carved first. And I'm gonna use a V carve. I'm going to use my 60 degree V bit. The plunge and feed rate that I use are 8090, RPM at 18,000. I keep the depth per pass and the step over as default, I never touch those. My max depth is going to be stock bottom and I'll name this stars. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do my stripes. So I'll select that group. I'm going to use an advanced V carve. I'm going to enable my pocket area tool, my area pocket tool. I'm going to use the quarter inch end mill. And same with the plunge and feed rate, 80, 90. I don't mess with the step over or depth per pass. That is staying the same. My max depth in this particular case, I'll just leave it at 0 0.04. My, if you've seen my favorite pocket range video, I like to pocket anywhere between 0 0.02 and 0 0.05. So in this particular case, 0 0.04 is fine. And lastly, I like to set up the toolpath for the image. And I'm going to use an advanced V carp as well. And in this case, I'm going to enable the area pocket and it's up to you whether or not you want to use a 201 or the 1 8 end mill. If you want to go a little bit slower and maybe get a little bit more detail out of your image, you can go with the 1 8 In this particular example, I used a quarter inch end mill to speed up the process. And again, 80, 90 for the plunge and feed rate. For my V bit, I am going to stick with the 60 degree V bit. Again, 80, 90. And I'm going to keep the max depth the same. Even though it is an advanced V carve, the advanced V carve gives us a flat bottom. So we don't want to use the stock bottom for a max depth. We want a flat bottom. So we want to keep everything proportional at 0 0.04 or whatever max depth you did for the stripes. So now that we have everything set up, let's go ahead and take a look at our simulation. And there you have it. You have a nice looking flag. So now with the toolpath set up, let me go ahead and show you a time lapse of this being carved. In this time-lapse example, the stripes and image were saved as one single toolpath. Since the toolpath settings were the same as we discussed earlier, it can be saved as a single toolpath rather than two. My default is to set up two different toolpaths, but if you're in a time crunch as I was when making this flag, using one toolpath can save you time. Carving stripes with an advanced V carve may take more time than if I were to just use an end mill but I really like how the 60 degree V bit creates sharp corners on the stripes. Here's the final product guys, what do you think?